Hi folks, thanks for joining me again. I'm Stephen Crowley. Today I've got this simple little winter landscape for you. I'm just using the three colours. I'll show you the colours now. So all I used for this one was ultramarine, a little bit of raw sienna and burnt umber was the other one. Um, let's take a quick look at the brushes. Um, I used most of it done with the large on Ransom Hike and then I got a couple of riggers, a zero and a size three. And then the only other one I used was the the sword liner when doing all the background trees. So I'm going to start this one off with just a little bit of water, not too much. So I'm just so I'm just soaking the brush in the water jar, but then I'm taking most of it off on the lip before I brush it onto the paper because I don't want loads of paint running down the paper. Although that does happen a little bit. So all I've done, I've just mixed the three colours I'm going to be using for this one which are raw sienna, burnt umber and ultramarine and then just brushing in, just filling up the sort of top half of the paper which is going to represent the sky, the sky area. So you end up with this sort of nice contrast of the sort of dark sort of grey sky and then the white, pristine white uh, paper which represents the snow. And all I've done here is just use a little bit of tissue or kitchen roll just to soak up that little bit of water. But notice I'm not I'm not doing like really sharp edges or anything, I'm just trying to keep everything nice and random. So now I'm thinking about the, the bushes now that go along the horizon line that they're gonna sort of sit there as a background. So I'm mixing predominantly ultramarine and burnt umber together. And then just using the corner of the height brush, just looking for random shapes and patterns to suggest a nice sort of natural looking backdrop. I'll be getting the, 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 the sword liner out in a bit just to start putting in some of those trees and branches and things. But for now I'm just sticking with the height brush and just ideally just wanting the paper just to dry a little bit so that the paint is on a little bit stronger. I can always use the hair dryer but so you see I've got the sword liner brush out now. I've just mixed the same colours together again. Just a bit of burnt umber and ultramarine and now I'm just popping in a few little trees that are going to sit amongst, well sit just in front of all those bushes that I've just put in. So switching to the left hand side now there's going to be a, a few uh, slightly bigger ones. These are slightly closer so I'm doing them a little bit bigger but I, I'm conscious that there's going to be some uh, little cottages that are going to go on the left hand side so I know I want to get it in fairly dark because I want to scrape it in with the card and the best way to do that is if you get it on sort of dark, nice and dark, and preferably a bit thick, so that you don't have to wait for the paint to dry too much. Makes it a little bit easier. So as the paper is drying, I'm sort of trying to get it on nice and strong now. You can see how this is contrasting with the paint that I've already put on. This is going on a bit lot stronger now, so the paper's not as wet, so the paint's not quite as diluted. And I often I'll compensate by the, with the wet paper by having a little bit less water on the brush. And now when I wet it at the start you can see the paper is just slightly stretched now. It's just slightly proud of the board. So all I do I just unclip it on the right hand side and just refix it. Pull it flat so it's flat against the board again. So I've switched back to the sword liner brush now. Mix the same two colours ultramarine and burnt umber. And I'm just popping those trees back in, just strengthening them. But because the paper's still a little bit wet, it's not going on as strong as it could do. But I'm just uh, carrying on. Now I've switched back to the left as well. Back to the left hand side. And what I'd like to do is just... It might look as if I'm being a bit careless, but the quicker I can move my hand, I feel as if the... The, the trees just seem to work better, looks a bit more natural than a sort of slow methodical approach. So I just like to get the sword line. I used to use the rigger all the time for this, but you're constantly reloading. 
You can see now I've just got a plastic card. This is just a standard plastic card, like a bank card or anything. And it's just cut down to size. And I'm just using that now to scrape the paint down the paper to leave. I'm just trying to get back to the white of the paper now. And it just gives the impression of a roof. So if I just put the little bit of the, the other side of the roof in, that, that's pretty much all I do with buildings. I might do like a few little scrapes around them, just a few little random details. These like little fence posts I'm trying to put in. Sometimes if there's like a strong sun or something, I might darken the side of the building. But normally, nine times out of ten, all I do is really is just focus on the roof. Maybe just a little scrape here and there to suggest a few little windows. So I'll just switch back to the height brush and now I'm just trying to define the, the, the lay of the land now. So you can see we've got, we've got a slope, big slope coming down that right hand side. So that's the way I'm angling, angling the, the, the brush strokes to suggest that sort of land. Back to the back to the sword line. Now my thinking here was if you look at those trees I did, the two and the, the buildings, I think I've, I've lost the scale a little bit. The trees are too big or the buildings are too small, whichever way you look at it. So I wanted to bring that tree that was on the left of the buildings down into the foreground. So I've, I've extended the trunk down into the foreground to try and get the scale back to make that one look bigger. Because it's in the foreground rather than it's like a huge tree in the background with a little cottage underneath. So I'm just shaping the, the edges now, the, the road that runs through the scene. Our little man and our dog will be walking up. And you can see just again, just all it takes is a few simple little strokes. Nothing, nothing, too, nothing technical. And don't worry about getting them all nice. The more random you can do it, the better. Don't worry about getting nice little patterns. A nice bit of symmetry and, and everything nice and tidy. Just go, just trying to make it random now so that it looks natural. Leave plenty of white as well, because you want to represent as much snow as you can. Because once you've painted over it, you've, you've lost all that snow. So I'll switch back to the sword liner now, and I'm trying to strengthen that tree. I suppose I should have dried it really, so it went on a lot stronger, but never mind. Just a simple mix of burnt umber and ultramarine. Pretty much the same mix I've been using throughout the paint. And just, there's just there's only a little bit of, I didn't use the raw sienna much. I could probably have done this with just those two colours, ultramarine and burnt umber really. There's a bit of raw sienna in there just for a, a hint of uh, variation. So I'm just trying to strengthen this tree just to bring it down into the foreground because the scale was completely wrong when I left it alongside or behind those houses. The scale was just lost completely. It was just too, the trees were just too big. So now I'm brushing, deliberately brushing some of the branches now over those roofs. Just to emphasise the fact that, that this tree is, is closer to us. But you can see I know that the, 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 the sort of main, the shape of the painting is beginning to uh, emerge now. So now I've switched to the rigger brush, number three rigger. I'm just popping in a few little, just random dark tones here and there. And a few lines here, just to give the sort of, some perspective on these, on this line. And just little, little touches here and there, just to suggest blades of grass or posts or whatever they are, just random dark marks in the foreground. more little posts and things but again as always it's it's trying to keep it subtle without overdoing it because once you've overdone it it's it's difficult then to get it back so I'm starting to think where where should I put my little man and I think 
he's going to have to pop up. I can't just keep him within the white section. I thought I'm going to have to do him. I'm going to do him a little bit bigger this time, I think. So again, dark mix. And just put in a little, simple little, little shape of our little man walking up the hill. And I think I'll just put the dog in front of him, just a little companion. That'll go in next after this one. So I've got the sort of main shape of him done. It's always nice to have like a little, just some little focal point in your painting where everything's leading. So I think this works well because it's at the it's at the top of the line. So you sort of you sort of start at the line. Your eye just works its way up the hill, and there's our little man and his dog making his way up through the little village and into, into the woods beyond. And then I'm going to start thinking about putting some foreground shadows in once I've got our little man in. So just a few before I do that, just a few little more dark tones here and there. Again, it's all about variation, you don't want everything to... everything looking the same, everything looking pale and diluted. A few lighter tones, a few darker tones, mix it up. Plenty of diversity. And then remember, you can always join me on Patreon if you fancy that. Patreon.com slash Stephen Cronin. There must be about, it's got to be over 200 videos on there that are just exclusive to patrons. It's, um, if, uh, the annual subscription, you get two months free as well if you want to do the annual, the annual uh, option. Um, loads of reference photographs on there as well. That's where I put on my, uh, when I, I, I was out, um, Saturday or Sunday this week, I think, early one morning, caught a load of sort of low line sun, loads of silhouettes everywhere. So I took a load of photographs and posted them. That's where I always post all the photographs on there as well. So that's all the patreon.com slash Stephen Cronin. Um, back to this one. Back to the air dryer, and I'm thinking now it's, it's time to put these shadows in. So before I do, I want everything nice and dry. That's where the air dryer comes in handy. If you haven't got one, you can always just, just sit and wait, have a cup of tea, let it dry naturally. But the air dryer just speeds it right up. I think this is only the second air dryer I've ever used, the old one. I think I, think I burnt it out. I didn't use it that much. You have to be careful not to put it too close to the paper, though, because the, the, the heater sort of, sort of um, stops working as it overheats. You have to wait for a couple of minutes for it to, uh, to cool down before it works again. I did, I, I painted briefly in the car and I tried to get a plug-in air dryer but they're, they're, they're just not the same. It's just like this little thing, there's it's no power in it whatsoever. I could have blown on it and, and had, had a bit of uh, results. So it's back to the height now and you can see these big shadows. So coming from the right hand side, sort of down the hill and then across, across the, the path, road, whatever it is. And then just us, if we, if there was space there, it would just be starting to go up the left hand uh, bank as well, just in front of that tree. So you can see how it just, just enhances the light a little bit, just gives it a bit more life with these shadows. I always like to put something in the foreground, like some sort of imaginary big element on the right, off could be a tree or anything, casting a big shadow. A few more touches with the rigger brush. And I just want to get a little bit of a shadow off, off our little man there and his dog up, up the top of the road. And it's not, it's not a million miles now away from being complete. Everything's in place. Just give it a good look over. I often think, well, what I what I tend to do is just go and stand at the back of the room and have a look at it from a distance. And if it, if it looks okay from a distance, then you, you, you pretty much... 
you're pretty much there or thereabouts. If you can't make out the, the main shapes or elements, then generally the, the tones need adjusting, just something needs darkening just to make it stand out a bit, just to contrast from something behind or something like that. I think now I'm uh, pretty much done. So I think all I need now is just a little signature in the corner. And I can call this one complete. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little uh, winter scene. Um, just the three colours. So I was just, just try and keep the colours as harmonious as I possibly could. So we just had a start with this background sky. Very, very simple. Just a mix of all three. It's more just like a plain, plain grey. And you can see where I've just mixed a bit of same colours again, just to put in those faint distant trees while the paper was still wet. So it gives you that sort of distant misty look especially these over on this side um I might have looked better if i'd have put one darker one in just to bring it forward but it doesn't look too bad um maybe this one as well i thought i'd put another sort of wash over that just to bring that f further forward and push that back but cause it's got this very similar in tone to the background that could have been better um but the rest of it see where I've just scraped the housing, you can see where I've just scraped the odd little window in as well, just give the impression of light coming from within. Just focused on the roofs and then just let the viewers eye just do the rest. Lots of random just dark markings there just to contrast against the white blanket snow in the foreground. A few posts, a little man and his dog there, just put in very very simply and just scraped a few more posts in with the card there. Going up the right hand hill side. Also use the, the rigger brush as well to add a few more posts and a few more random lines coming right down into the foreground. You can see when I've again I've just mixed the, all the colours together just to create this sort of grey as the shadow just comes down the hill, just follows the contours of the land across and then starts going up the other side again. So I hope this has inspired you to have a go and uh, have a go at your own winter landscape maybe. Um, if you've got any questions please ask please ask do join me over at patreon.com slash stephen crone if you get the chance you'll be most welcome post all your own paintings on the community page and get feedback and um, as well as lots and there's loads and loads there must be about 200 videos on there exclusive to patreon so until then keep practicing if you've got any questions please ask and i'll see you again soon